welcome to another video and a community that believes we are just wonderful and magic is real and I forgot to grab my books. And a community that has been reading Harry Potter. Harry Potter? I said that weirdly. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Uh, I don't know why I have to say it that way, but anyway, I'm here accompanied by, I, I think we have to say your name because not everybody seems to know your name. Uh, your name, sir? My name is Lucius. No, it is oh. not. <laughs> but I am now correcting myself. I don't know why I've been calling him Lucius. I know I didn't start that way. It's just transformed. No, oh, sure. It's the evil. I just want to like. It didn't start that way. I want to mm -hmm. tick him off. It's me. Know? It's me. It's DDP. Matt. Draco. No, 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 no. No. Don't call Matt. me Matt. Yeah. Stop it. Don't do it. All right. Anyway, we are here to go over all the feels, all the thoughts on chapter 16 through 19. Let's go with a recap. We have got some oogling over the crumb and uh, the half villa that is Flora Delacour. Totally forgot that. We've got to the Crouch and the Ludo as the judges. We've got the death of the goblet. Get it? Casket? Goblet of fire in the casket. Oh, I Brought have, in like it's dead. I have comments on that. I oh, know. <laughs> We've wrong. got the finely bearded twins. We've got Halloween. What? More Halloween. Um, we've got Madame Maxine and Madame Maxine the baby dragon. Anybody get it? Maxine? Maxime. I always, I always switch it up. <laughs> the baby dragon. The baby dragon in the eyes of Hagrid. The only other one that he gave that look to. Um, we've I got- one of those eggs. I am recapping, sir. We've got the slip of the potter. Get it? Did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Um, speaking of which, we got the calmly asked question um, and some goblet shenanigans. Um, we've got the great debate and Moody's revelio of himself, really. Like, I didn't realize how much he revealed of himself in that moment. Uh, we've got jealous and whiny Ron. Why? Why? We didn't want this. We don't need this. Okay. Um, we've got a toast, toast grabbing tentacles. I need to see that. Um, walking the screw. We got Bucktooth Hermione. Um, not sure we need to see that. And we've got another Harry in the cupboard. He's always in the cupboard. Nobody puts Harry in the cupboard, okay? Apparently everybody does. We've got Skeeter who will tell lies. And the not so invisible invisibility cloak. And then let there be dragons and a side of Charlie, which I didn't remember. Chapter 16. Harry Potter. Harry Potter! No. No. The Goblet of Fire. Before we get into that, one thing I didn't say the last time around, when we had the grand entrance of everybody, is Hogwarts needs to step it up. What we've got, and we're gonna get into it, but we've got some pretty magnificent carriages and sleeping quarters and a skeleton ship. What is the transportation for Hogwarts? Do tell. How do they get around? If it's hosted at, uh, over there, how are they getting there? Where are they sleeping? Well, we'll never know. I want to see these quarters. <laughs> because it never happens again. I know, it's rude. Um, well, we don't know that. We don't know the future. No, we do. Maybe it's Harry's kids. She didn't write anything else, so it doesn't happen Well, again. there's all this stuff on the internet that we just don't pay attention to, so. Uh, anyway, what the heck happened uh, in the Goblet of Fire? Let's go. What are your thoughts while I sort mine out? The casket? Do you want to talk, talk about the death of the casket? What are your thoughts on that? Well, a casket is... Uh, the goblet comes in, which, by the way, is, is, a, is a different shaped situation. Different... Not shaped. Although, kind of. I'm getting, like, Indiana Jones vibes from this goblet. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a casket is a small ornamental box or chest for holding jewels, letters, or other valuable objects. So not human bodies? Correct. Oh. So I, I was thinking the same thing you were. And I, I thought... Huh. I thought Harry what was too, now? but she doesn't write it that way. Because when he says casket, and and Harry goes, what? What? And I'm like, oh, is he thinking <laughs> the same thing I am? So I, I looked it up. Because uh -huh. I was like, do we not, do we use the word incorrectly? I mean, we usually say coffin, but casket That's does true. come up. So then you casket start thinking, oh. Uh, replaced uh, with coffin. So I don't, I don't know why... Uh, it does, it, it's, yeah, I don't know. Oh, that. let's backpedal. We got a lot of oogling over crumb, like autographs and will he let me use my lipstick and... Oh yeah, you I, signed my hat with quite that lipstick level in the and... movies. <laughs> Which, by the way, I need to pull up an illustration of him. Um, very different from, in, in Jim K, um, very different from the films. He looks like something out of the Addams Family. Am I wrong? Like the Adams family, like, no, maybe a little Jon Snow situation. Like Jon Snow 
who's who's been through some stuff and maybe a little bullied. It's just young Uncle Fester. <laughs> young Uncle Fester, yeah. I dig it. I kind of dig it. Anywho, um, so those are our fails in the casket. We also get like everybody and their mom entering themselves, except for well, Hogwarts. Not really. Well, it's like all the Bobatons. Yeah, but there's only entered. like ten of this each is of them true. or something. Like... In the films, they make it seem like there's so many more kids than there are. In I the don't books. feel like. That, well, what did they I guess say, like a dozen total like more, or something, or was it like twenty or something? There's like, like that? nobody total? there. Yeah. So, and then, for something that's so grand, you know. Yeah, it's I not guess their entire school coming, which right. is interesting. It's just the of age, but not yeah, really. Yeah, but then you'd expect but there to be more really. of them too. Yeah, it is. It is complicated. It's, it's I think this comes down to she hadn't developed the other schools to the degree she developed Hogwarts. Yeah. So but if she, she doesn't just really let know. the reins go and let other people write in this world, maybe they will develop those schools because they True. would be really cool to but see. But also, if you start thinking <clears throat> too much about Hogwarts, it falls apart too. Mm. If you think about the number of people she admits into the school every year and then try to figure out the sleeping situations. It's a magical place. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a Moving magical stairs. place where the same amount of people show up every year and get sorted into those houses but equally. they leave. It's school. They still I know, leave. But everybody gets sorted equally. I mean, they all end up as teachers anyway. Kind of curious how that works, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So basically, if your family's destined <clears throat> for a Gryffindor, somebody else that might have been a Gryffindor now gets shoved into Slytherin just because, well, I only have so much space over there. I got to mm -hmm. put you over here now. <laughs> and let's point out the obvious. We don't get this grand, like, huh, huh, flippy situation. Oh, the entrance. Stuff. They just come in right. and the Bobatons. Actually, I'm trying to remember. Did she did she describe their outfits as blue? I think so. I thought she did too. I actually too. don't remember now. Because um, I was like, oh, how how convenient that sh they sit at the Ravenclaw table, you know, a blue house, and then it kind of made sense. The dirt string is red, blood red. I know, but um, the bloody Baron. They sat at the Slytherin house. I'm just saying. Anyway, they just came in and they just sat down. Like well, it wasn't a big. The other thing, though, is she wrote in there blood red robes. And in the film, they don't wear robes. Yeah. They've got these, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just an outfit. There's just trousers and a t shirt, basically, more or less. Yeah. Um, you know, a slightly more rough version. But yeah, I wrote down the, about the wooden cup because yeah. I forget her phrasing exactly, but it's like roughly cut, basically. Like it's. Yeah, that's what gave me the Indian Jones vibes. Uh, yeah. Like something that's aged, been around for a while. Well, and it's supposed to be the, it's Can special. you imagine a replica of that? It's not too hard to do. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> we can make it ourselves, probably. It's important despite its looks. Yeah. It, it's that whole thing, yeah, like you said, in Indiana Jones, where it's like the one everybody goes for is the shiny one with the jewels, but that's not the one that you're supposed to pick. Yeah. Yada, yada. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, most everything else about it is the same. Other than the, the Halloween aspect. The blue fire... Oh, sorry. You were just talking the, about that. My heads. Yeah. The Moved sparks on. when people put their names in stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that seems to be accurate to the film. So not a lot of changes there when we get to the uh, show, probably. Outside of, yeah. obviously, it's a. it appears to be a much smaller cup and yeah. is wood. Mm -hmm. Whereas, uh, like That's I said, said, when we were looking at that clip, it looks like they, they tried to make it look roughly done. But, you know, there's that scene where Dumbledore puts his hands on it. And he's got those rings on, and you can hear the clank. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, yeah, it's definitely it's not wood. Metal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, oh, and then we get entrances from named characters, which we didn't. Obviously, we get like Cedric Diggory and. Oh, you mean Victor people Crum, putting their names in? But Angela. Angelina? Right. Angelina. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, forgot who else. Well, the other. Miss Summers. Thing we got was, a Hufflepuff. It was Lee Jordan, right? That was with the twins. I know. But he didn't. He didn't go to do it yet. He didn't but do he it. was. I thought he, he did, he and was, then I reread it. He did drink the. Were they a couple of drops of the potion or whatever the, the thing was they were doing? Mm -hmm. it, it read like he'd done that already, but he didn't. The the twins went in first, and he was picking on them with everyone else after. Yeah, yeah. and that pretty much panned out the same as far as like being thrown out Ish. um other than dumbledore, dumbledore is instantly there there yeah yeah i and liked then, that uh, he's so cheeky he's always there uh, this is why i love dumbledore yeah um my other this is a good laugh too. i i brought this up to you a, a little bit ago mm. why aren't like the age line stops you from walking in to the cup yeah. 
why are there not younger people writing their names on paper and balling it up and throwing it yeah. towards the cup? I feel like that's a thing they could add. Like, why would you not just be sitting there until one of them went in? Yeah. But this is getting back at Rowling is not great at defining her rules. Well, she did define happened? the rules. She just didn't... Yes, but I mean thought through. <laughs> right, right. The yeah. age line doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's a flawed thing when you're just putting a piece of paper in a cup. Yeah. Uh, because <clears throat> obviously I can throw things at the cup. Why is nobody doing that? Why aren't they using, you know, like, Leviosa? Yeah, true. Like, I just don't... It's all confusing because... The age line isn't going to stop a piece of paper from going through. That doesn't have an age. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do we want to move on? Oh, no, before that. They sleep in their carriage. They sleep in the ship. Yeah. Like, let go. I think you're going to have to redo that. You know what I'm saying? Like, some open <laughs> compartments down below with some beds. Like, yeah, no, Lego. And make it a skeleton situation. Lego's not the one that has to redo it. It's, it's I know. the people who made the film who made the mistake there. Um, but we get Hagrid, you know, getting all fancy and stuff, but also we get him denying the spew. The man who loves animals, denying some Okay, spew. well, first of all, you just made it worse by Excuse saying me. animals. <laughs> what? We want them. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Like, he can love animals and... I know, I know, I know. Feel... Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. He's not wrong, though. <laughs> It, it, but it is also a... Uh, I mean, okay, let's rephrase. A man who has compassion for other beings. But this is... Doesn't this is the apply problem. it to certain beings. Right. But this is the problem with Hermione's approach from the first place. But she, she also showed a lack of compassion for other there's beings. A, there's too. only it's one... It's an inconsistency. It's a common thing in humanity. Right. It, it needs to cease to but, exist. But she only knows of one elf who has freedom and is excited about it. And she hasn't talked to anyone else. And she's fighting for them. That's true. She hasn't really the, interviewed the elves. The, the, the whole thing about fighting for people is they need to be on board mm -hmm. for the fight. Mm -hmm. Because right now, what she should be doing is making... She should be like the manager for Dobby, <clears throat> the only one who wants these things, and just go find him a job. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's her the problem with her argument. And that's what, you know, Hagrid is saying here is they don't want what you are asking for and we kind of start to pick up on that later where i forget which chapter it's in but she she does bring up where where are the kitchens or, you know yeah and and somebody was it ron i forget who who brought it up i think it was ron talk to the yeah. twins sort of thing <clears throat> but we haven't got any further than that throughout these chapters with regard to her actually talking to somebody mm -hmm. um but yeah, it's it's really weird. I, I can kind of see it. They're at the right age for sort of snap decisions. Not a lot of research. Mm -hmm. It, it all kind of makes okay. sense. Uh, like I, I have to forgive it on that level. But um, yeah, it is weird that she's she's basing her entire argument off of the singular elf. I mean, yeah. technically too, but Winky didn't want that. Yeah. Right. The freedom part was her punishment, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and she hated it. But but again, you, you have to make the argument that it's it's just Hermione's age. She's she's quick to make judgments based off of something she's heard. She technically should be the least likely one to do that based off of how she treats studies. But mm. I don't know. My sister was big into school stuff, but then with boys would make stupid decisions. So mm -hmm. you could make the same argument that she saw It's a different Dobby. version of your brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely not the... I also the, did the same. Not the smart side, so... Um, oh, and then back it up, we get Fleur, the half Vila, which we obviously don't get that acknowledgement in the films. Uh, well, because they don't reference Vila at all. Yeah. It's not even... But not even subtly. They processed. don't even show any sway she has. Because she has that. Because now I'm kind of going, because I've obviously forgotten so much, like when we go into the goblet um, or into the tournament, does she get to utilize her half Vila aspect in any way uh, throughout the tournament? Or is it just thrown in there to be thrown in there? There are things. Because you but, don't throw something in if you're not getting a use out of it, you know? See, the, the problem here is in the <laughs> film, uh, this is where the TV show is going to benefit from using the source material more fully. Mm -hmm. In the film, we get a lot of this 
the boys are like staring at her and like infatuated. Yeah. But it, you're not. It never. But it's not an over the top. It's never lusting. explained why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, this gives an explanation. Yeah. Which will play much better into these exact same scenes that'll exist in the show that exist in the film with the background of oh this is what's going on because we should be viewing it from the side of Hermione sort of viewpoint and like what's wrong with you guys right <clears throat> whereas mm -hmm. in the film it's like it's all very confusing because even like Hermione isn't coming at it with any sort of logical well, guys she's she, you know Tavila yeah um it's kind of weird that even when you know that it's Avila, you still can't seem to fight it. Mm -hmm. Very odd. But then Harry has something weird going on too because he doesn't seem to fall for it. And I also wonder if that's because of the same thing I mentioned before uh, about him being able to break through that curse. Mm -hmm. If it's because of his uh, dark passenger. Yeah. I wonder if, if it, it, I think that might play a role because technically in his head he's got the equivalent of like a, a split personality thing going on mm -hmm. because there's there's two things yeah, taking up space boy. inside of there right yeah so when he's making a decision it's not just him you know there's this other side that's going to fight too yeah because we we know later and i'm basing this off of the films because i can't remember the books but when he's good when he's diving when snape's diving into harry's head like seeing all his memories mm -hmm. and stuff right like harry can't fight it but the other side doesn't want to fight it either, you see. Right. So, but we don't we don't get any of this in the film. Mm -hmm. Like all of the things we've seen in here where he, he's got this like internal conflict that we could maybe pick out by reading the book. We don't get that in the films. He does, there's, there's no, they're not being cursed. Uh, they're not Vila. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe they are, but sh they don't say, right? Like we never get in anything about it. So there's a lot of that stuff going on where, I think the show is going to be able to expand on a lot of things that are kind of small, but also kind of important because these are all little hints about the Horcrux thing going on all, yeah. that we don't know about yet, mm -hmm. but they're nice little like seeds that are planted Yeah, and they don't exist in the it film. It makes everything make sense yeah. when you have stuff. Yeah. No, that's all I've got for that chapter. Chapter 17. Fantasy, Harry. I protest. Harry. I protest. Harry, did you put your name in the couple of the fire? No, sir. You asked one of the older students to do it for you? No, sir. You're absolutely sure? Yes, sir. The Four Champions. So at the end of the last chapter, we got them calling out the names of the champions, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we end with him reading out Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. And then um, at the beginning of this one... Um, the Harry Potter up here, if you please. <laughs> yes. The kindness that we do not see in the movies from Dumbledore. Because again, oh, that's what we're going to get into is the way he phrased that or the way Rowling phrased that. That so many people were upset by in the films. Um, and I agree. Well, I mean, that, yeah. It, it, it's just uh, out of character. It is out of character. It, it, it kind of makes sense for the scene because... But it's so fun to say. He should be upset, but he's, he's not upset at Harry, right? But he's upset. That he's upset that this young boy is now facing. Well, I don't even think it's that. And because upset by whoever did it. We know he believes him. Yeah, but we know he's perfectly fine using Harry as bait. I don't think it's that. I think it's that he didn't plan yeah, for this. Yeah, but at appropriate times, at what he deems appropriate. And yeah, I but think he does not. He's had everything on lock, right? <clears throat> yeah. And now something's gotten through his... Mm -hmm. defenses of like yeah his it's plans. almost his own failing is right maybe the way he's exactly. viewing it mm -hmm. and and he's up he's upset at that but i mean that doesn't matter because he's not upset in here yeah uh i cannot find the line this is up annoying is it ludo because ludo no we didn't get ludo he brings the light that one <sighs> yeah bagman's not in it at all right i mean like... also it's not, it's not just what he says and the lightness and the joy and he's quite excited that harry's in here totally down for it but i'm imagining he's still in that same sort of outfit too that's going to bring like a real colorfulness to the whole scene. We also, I mean, while you're looking that up, we also get, I mean, most of it plays out the same as far as like Maxime is not pleased, but we get more from Fleur being like, this is unfair. We get commentary about like, okay, well, we need to redo this and get two people to enter from each house. 
Um, but I, I also feel like we get Karkaroff being a little more of the Karkaroff that many who knew him in his past know. Well, regardless. He's given up. Yep. Okay. But there is an important sex spot in there that does kind of drive me crazy. Why is Snape in that room with them? Because he's nosy. I mean, he has a large nose. He's just, he's a nosy person. He, he find, he's everywhere. I know. I, and it's weird. I guess McGonagall's there too. But mm -hmm. the other two heads of... He's the head of house. That's the thing Matt and I have talked about. Is like, there. do we, and I'm sure some of you who have read the stuff online that we just never really dove into... Do we ever get the actual acknowledgement of who the heads of houses are for Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff? Well, we did. I mean, Literally I know, in but these it's like chapters. Okay. Of Hufflepuff. Okay, fair. I guess it's just interesting that they don't really play. It plays into they don't. Gryffindor and Slytherin always being the the biggest names houses. But that's what I'm getting at here is if Snape is there and McGonagall's there, why aren't the other two? The other two should be there, exactly. or Snape yeah. shouldn't be there, and Sprout <clears throat> should be there mm -hmm. because it's her house that's represented. True. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, true. So, like, it's almost like Snape's just there so he can be a jerk. Like, she just mm -hmm. rode him in there so he could be a jerk. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for him to be there. Yeah, if you're not including, he's the not rest. a judge. Yep. And he's not. That's ahead true. of the house that's being represented. It was just very weird. Yeah, I felt he, it out of place too. I just for no reason he's there and he's being why. mean. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why, are you, why is he even here? <laughs> it's Technically very weird. speaking, Moody shouldn't have been there either, but well, that Moody, is what reveals him even more as well as the commentary he makes. Like, really outs himself. Yeah. But Moody, didn't Moody come in with Dumbledore, but Snape was already in there, I think. I didn't Something think like so. That? I didn't yeah. think so. I thought he came in after it was... Quite an entrance. Yeah. He always makes quite an entrance. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But we also know it's not Moody, so I, like I kind of forgive yeah. him because yeah. he's going. He's going to be pushing himself into situations, as we know. Yeah. So like it makes a little bit more sense. Like when we find him sneaking <laughs> off, talking to <clears throat> various people and giving, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Neville a book and all that stuff. Like these are all part of his plan. So it makes more sense. What is Snape's plan other than just being a jerk? I gotta be I everywhere because I gotta be a jerk. Speaking of a jerk, because I don't really have many other notes, other than the, I didn't make this come in the last chapter, but I thought it was interesting that the um, Bobatons were crying because some of them didn't get picked. Yeah, that's, <laughs> so that's bizarre. Like Not supportive of their person, so it's like, it, yeah, I wonder if there's some envy was? because she is half like Fila. I don't know. It wasn't really yeah, made clear. I, I couldn't tell if, like, no matter what, everybody else would be upset if somebody else got it, which is weird yeah. because only one person, theoretically, could have gone in. Because everybody else then... was supported. Crumb was supported by his people. Cedric was supported by the Hufflepuffs. And yeah. then later, Harry was supported by everybody but Ron. We get whiny Ron. We get well. sad, poor, jealous Ron. Not a fan. Yeah. And I, the, my note for the Ron thing too. is the Ron stuff makes no sense. Yeah. He just is immediately distrustful, doesn't want to listen at all. Like, it, you know, it, he's like, oh, does that thing for the same stuff from the film. I, it might even be the same lines for all I can remember. But the whole like, Will you, pet that you, cat? Could have, you could have told me. I thought we were friends sort of thing. I know. And it's like, I'm telling you, I didn't do it. Oh, yeah, sure. And it's like, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you believe him? Yeah. When did he I lie know. to you? Yeah. So I, I know. That threw me off. It's inconsistent. Yeah. I mean, it, it is fitting for a teenager, but it's not fitting for the history of that teenager. Well, not for your friend. <clears throat> yeah. Like, the, uh, I, I, I'm this not is, a fan. I'm this done is, with it. This is going to sound rude. This is total teenage girl behavior mm -hmm. where you just hate oh, your fair. friend one day and love them yeah, the next it day. Yeah, thing. This isn't. Super it's still common. A thing. It's this still, isn't, why I don't yeah. connect as easily to women. This isn't common for boys' relationships, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know why that is. I guess because boys are they're stupid and <laughs> emotionally mm, deprived or something. Either. But uh, yeah, but it it really felt like that mm -hmm. it, it, to me and. It's such a sudden twist mm -hmm. because you'd expect if this was something that could happen, it would have happened with other things randomly in the past too. Yeah. Where just something set him off for some reason for a couple of days. Uh, but no. I mean, yeah. the only thing here is boneheaded. That's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. 
but it goes on for so long. It goes on for so long. And it's so weird. All right. Well, let's not drag it on ourselves. That yep. is chapter 17. Chapter 18. Me, myself, and I want to know. Not to mention my rabid readers. <laughs> so, who's feeling up to Sherry? Hmm? Should we start with the youngest? The Weighing of the Wands. The chapter in which I totally forgot. The uh, Weighing of the Actual Wands. <laughs> a. There is no actual weighing. But no actual we won't get weighing, into that. Um, but the, the view might be different on what weighing actually is. But my yeah, true. first note for this chapter is a continuation of the, the last one. Is the toast in the lake? No. <sighs> and Harry makes no sense. <laughs> because not only does Ron make no sense at the end of the last chapter, Harry starts this one up by basically saying, well, if he's going to be that way... I don't He's a poo-poo head. I'm going to be a yeah. poo-poo head. I'm not going to talk to him. And it's like, what is wrong with you idiots? That is also a very teenager girl thing to do. But yeah, I just don't get it. If, if you, you And yet the one teenage, teenage girl is the most um, yeah. mindful, I mean, responsible. I'm okay with flipping things on their head, but there's a part that just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And it's just the fact that neither of them is being sane here. Like, okay, yeah, Ron's being an idiot, but you profess to care about Ron and you are not being an idiot and then oh no now you're being an idiot yeah like make it make sense no it doesn't um oh the scroots are killing each other um and they're taken for a walk like they would a three foot situation I need to see this kind of curious how they do it in the in the movie as always I would want them to use actual props with some possible CGI on top of that. I don't like when they lean into CGI before props, when props can be utilized. So I'm hoping to see that. But um, yeah, especially Draco walking a screwed with their butts blasting occasionally and being dragged yeah. on the ground. <laughs> I need to see it. Um, we still get these Cedric Diggory Potter Stinks badges, which, yeah, you know, that's fine. That's what, that's what they do. I mean, that's what you do. And we did all that sort of kind of stuff in high school and all of that. Um, but we did not get, I uh, do not believe, the little battle between, um, no, I know we didn't, between Harry and Draco and some extra long buck tooth teeth. Buck teeth? Buck tooth? Buck tooth? Yes. On Hermione and then Goyle getting, what was it, boils, right? I actually can't recall. <laughs> I thought it was boils. Because uh, the Hermione thing was so much yeah, more important. Yeah, boils, larger, growing larger boils. So I guess maybe you already had them and they just grew larger. <laughs> um, but it is a mention of like a couple spells that we don't really get mention of previously or much. Yeah. So it's nice to see more utilization of the spells that they're taught, which is a complaint that we had yeah, in the great, past. Yeah, great, great utilization. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's what they do, they're kids. And then we get the skeets. Ski Rita Skeeter, it just reminded me, Rita Skeeter, we'll get this, we'll get into this in a video, is like Dolores Umbridge for me. Well, ironically. Oh, she's so grating. She, she is described very differently. She is. Mm -hmm. She's heavier. Oh, I didn't pick up on that. Well, she didn't describe her body type that way, but she talked about her thick fingers. Oh. Which is what my the giveaway was for that her being a little bit. That is the way he bit. illustrated her. Here, you describe that while I pull her up. I forget the exact phrasing, but I was like, oh, thick fingers. Didn't see that coming. Also, she's got some gold teeth. Yeah, right? That's so, really weird. So that leads me to believe she's probably not wearing a grill, so you have to assume she's had some teeth removed. So this is Jim Kay's illustration of Rita Skeeter. Um, we got the like two inch nails that are described, the crocodile purse right there. The quill is pretty similar. As, I mean, as far as like being green, it's not super descriptive, but. People would be very weird about this and rightfully so. You mean an older woman being in a small shoving room? Shoving a child a into child? a- Yeah, shoving yeah. a teenage boy That's into a closet. Too. Yes. Yeah. There's something very creepy yeah. about, <laughs> about those actions. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess nobody questions it. The other thing is the um, her her notepad and the, the quill like disappearing really quick. When, when Dumbledore, Dumbledore arrives? Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. So even she knows. A she little acknowledgement that she's a naughty, naughty girl. And then the, uh, the first sort of chat about how she clearly doesn't like Dumbledore when mm -hmm. um, they're talking about her article about the... And he expresses his clear dislike yeah, of her too. Yeah, for, forgetting what it's actually called. It's it's something to do with like the 
European wizarding group or whatever. Yeah, the, I don't the remember group either. Is. But yeah, about how he's... Uh, <clears throat> Dingbat. Dingbat. Which when she said that word, I was like, oh my God, we used to use that word all the time as a kid. My mom would call me that, like... Yeah. It was one of those, like, not so harsh words, but, you know, basically calling you a little cuckoo. Yeah, you're yeah. being dumb. Yeah. Sort of thing. Or, yeah, not bright either. Silly. But. Yeah, I don't really have much else. Pretty other boring. than, like, we get more of the embellishment of just how far the quill goes. Like, we get some of the actual wording and, you know, Harry crying. We also get the follow-up of, like, Draco making fun of Harry, so other people picking up on we some of the things We did get that, that in the said. film, though. Not so. to that level, but... Well, a little bit. Like yeah, we the, got the, it. Yeah. The phrasing of in the article was pretty much the same. It might even mm. have been the same. I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, I never am good at comparing those two things without pulling <clears throat> it back up again. And I didn't want to pull up too much of the movie. Yeah. But I, I think this this whole set of scenes here is kind of weird just because it, it doesn't happen in the film. So like, And I don't understand the point. I guess that's I the feel other like thing. it was just an opportunity to, I don't know, make it more of a flashy thing, prepping for... Oh, this yeah, no, I, I see that. Um, as well as her other opportunity to highlight um, the other schools, almost. I mean, it wasn't really the schools, but, like, the Grigorovich um, yeah. comment about another wand maker being out there, that sort of thing. But not It was just an opportunity. Not a Whether one. that was needed. I still enjoyed it, but I, I totally agree with your viewpoint. I did like the taking of the photos of everybody. That makes sense. And having to redo that because Madame Maxime is casting a shadow over everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so then she's fun. sitting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then we wrap with a letter back because Harry had sent one out from mm -hmm. Sirius saying on the 22nd of November, you will find me in the fire. Does he need to wait three weeks to have a chat? Like, uh, Maybe to we're gonna scope have a chat out where days. the house is he's going to be because we do get that context of yeah. how he got there, but... But like two days before the task, sure. Who knows? It Maybe makes somebody found out where he is. Then. I don't know. That's not one that. I, that was one no. thing I was questioning, just yeah. because it was like, why are you waiting so long to chat? Like mm. this seems more important than waiting three weeks and yeah, literally right. two days before the task happens. And like, oh yeah, well if we can meet, then that'd be great. You know, way mm. deep into the middle of the night, if we could just have a chat right before then, when you're dealing with all of that stuff and having sat on all this other information for three weeks. Ah, yeah. yeah. Just because someone's trying to kill you doesn't mean we should chat sooner. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. And that is chapter 18. Chapter 19. <laughs> Can we get closer? The Hungarian Horntail. Very different. Very different. Well, yeah. Do we jump to that right away? No. Do we talk about dung bombs? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they weren't used, so I guess they weren't there's nothing used. But to I like that there was context that they well, thought through how to clear the room. Who who has those? The Weasley twins, probably. Yeah, but they had access to them where they could just use them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wh who? Where is she getting them? Where where do you have these ready to go, Hermione? Um, just <clears throat> out of curiosity. Anyway, uh, my first note is actually with regard to the library because Harry was talking about how being friends with Hermione was very different than being friends with Ron because a lot of the time spent with Hermione is down at the library and, uh -huh. and then it's just not as much fun there and all this research stuff. And this is where we get... At, at, there is a scene in the movie, actually several little cuts of this happening, but of Victor being in places around Hermione. I thought you were going to mention that. Yes. At the library. So reading our, books. My, my note is about Victor being it. a stalker. You think he's being a stalker? Yeah, he's in the. He's not reading. He's in the library. Huh, I didn't really pick that up. Because he doesn't know how to approach Hermione. Hmm. This comes up later. But, oh, how endearing. But basically, <laughs> he's, he's stalking Hermione. Hmm. So... We're going to see more of this. This is this is very like quick cut kind of stuff. In I guess the, that makes um, the illustration really accurate. The way he's like, yeah, <laughs> the, over. the uh, there's this is a quick cut thing in the film, where uh, Ron and and Hermione are in various places and she's doing stuff. The the thing <clears> they did <throat> differently in the film though is like, Hermione notices him, and she kind of gets a little flush sort of thing like. But in, in the book, she's very quick to go, he's an idiot. 
Yeah, so it's and actually no a dis- little bit of the reverse of him being interested in right. her. Right, there's no... And he was the one that asked her in the films. It, yeah. Th- so well, they and, made that... And in the make- film, he was legitimately walking around places she was. It mm-hmm. wasn't by happenstance, although... It's just a little more obvious in the books. Yeah, I think so, because this is very clear. Like, what is he doing here? He's not reading. He's... Mm-hmm. And... Um, but then there's no such a sweet there's nothing written about Hermione having any feelings. Do we find out why they didn't write letters to each other with regard to him? Well, uh, we know in the film he wasn't interested in talking. I know, which he doesn't do too much of that. So in the books so far, if you're not interested in talking, can't <clears throat> imagine him writing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then we get Hagrid inviting Harry over later. Harry trying to figure out how am I going to do this. Um, uses the invisibility cloak. Oh, so you're talking about in Hogsmeade. Am I jumping too far ahead? Yes. Okay. Because there's a little bit here. More. So in Hogsmeade. Um, oh, you want to talk about Mad-Eye Moody? Yes. Noticing see, Harry. Can see through the cloak. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing to yeah. you know, be aware of. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, there's a conversation happening between Moody and Hagrid right before Hagrid divulges the dragon information to Harry. Yep. And this is the second little hint we get at Moody Knowing dropping hints to people yep. that will get to Harry. Yeah, I was thinking that too, yeah. And it's very specifically written in here. Uh, in fact, it, it even she even wrote that he leaned over and whispered into Hagrid's ear. Mm-hmm. Like there was, it was very specific right in that moment sort of thing. So this, this big reveal later isn't going to be as big as it is in the in the film where, like, we didn't see any of this extra stuff. Like, I think the only time we got anything was uh, Moody pulls um, Neville away in the films after he has that whole scene about, like, his parents and stuff. Mm. And he looks really down out in the hallway and he's like, come with me. There's nothing really with Hagrid, I don't think. And then uh, any other, like... Fiddling around with things isn't really in the films, so it comes as more of a shocker, I think, in in their version of the story. Whereas here, I think when you take the book and turn it into um, the show, we're going to get these little bits that just start building and building, and you're like, well, Moody really is around a lot right before all of these things that Harry finds out about. And uh, it's kind of similar, like, he, they, he does bring it up in the film when he's like, well, do you think Cedric would have told you, da, 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 if I hadn't done... Mm-hmm. And, and so now I'm looking forward to that scene, like, do we get her showing us the little scene of Moody sort of whispering in Cedric's ear? Do we get, do we actually get that in the book? Because I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But are we actually going to see it the same way we've seen these others? Like, the, the, they're there. We see him whispering into Hagrid's ear. We, we you know... We're getting all of the buildup mm-hmm. actually written. So I'm kind of curious if that continues or not. Yeah. But um, then dragons. And yes. then let there be dragons. Let there be Madame Maxime and Charlie. Yes. Nice to see Charlie. Hey, buddy. How so, you doing? Um, Charlie, I guess, technically would have been there in the film. But yeah, he's but it's nice to actually not. have his face. Really. Yeah. Doing yeah. a, doing the thing he does. I mean, he's he's referenced <clears throat> because in the film, they do that stupid thing with Ron tells. I know s- Hermione. Uh, mean? Hermione and that Hermione tells... somebody told him that. Yeah, I'm glad that was that whole in stupid the thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's sort of how we get the the discussion of you know he found out because of Charlie. Yeah. But we don't find that out until later in the the movie, even because he was saying that somebody else had told him, and then when they're friends again, he's like, "No, no, don't you see? He, it was actually me." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, this was dumb. Um, but we also get a little bit of differences with the dragon. I mean, we can get into the the descriptions of them, but like the stupefying of the dragon, we did not get. With a whole bunch of with them. With a whole bunch of them coming together to stupefy yeah, yeah, yeah. the dragon. Yeah, and falling over, just to kind of show the power. Then we get, then we get the descriptions of the dragon, and that's what I was talking about, is is the one that Harry's going to face. Right, because... I already, forgot. I already forgot which one that is. Hungarian. The Hungarian. Black. Yeah. A black dragon 
Did it, you describe the... It was, uh, they were bronze, bronze? like, spikes. spikes. All, of, all of his um, spiky bits were, yeah. like, bronze. And we were we were talking about how, like, there's there's not a single that I can think of black dragon depicted in the films, but yet there's no. now been two prominent black dragons, both the Hungarian and Norbert. So we're going to get some more black dragons. I personally prefer, I always prefer, I always prefer black. Come on. Like, um, but well, yeah, I, I like that. I want to see I, that. I wanted to quickly go over the other ones. Oh, and we because... get the differences in their ability. Like the Hungarian can shoot fire 20 feet. 40. Sorry, 40 feet. The others do 20 feet, I think it was. It was like yeah. double the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's more lizard-like. Isn't that the Hungarian that was more lizard-like? Is think? that what they said? I, I actually don't remember lizard -like, that one. Lizard-like, I think so. It might, might have been that way. Uh, um, pupils like cats, but I think that's just a dragon thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to go over the other ones. We yeah. don't see them love in the film. love us dragons here. They have the tiny little things, but I don't remember them in detail enough to compare. Things. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't actually see them fully there. I would like that. I'm hoping with in the, the show, show we actually get you mean seeing all four. I want to see them all complete the task. Facing. Even yeah. Even if yeah, it's yeah. just a quick clip yeah. like they do and with not stuff. In full detail, but um, yeah, more than we got. But so we've got a silvery blue one with long pointed horns, mm -hmm. which would be the short snout. I've got it written down. I've Swedish. Got, I have notes. Short snout, uh -huh. blue gray, which is how it's described over here, and then over here it says silvery blue. So silvery mm. blue reads a little different than blue gray to me. Yeah, but true. That's like the that's no big deal. Pointed horns, uh, and then we've got a smooth scaled green one. That's the common Welsh. So doesn't sound like that one has any horns. Right. Um, and then the Chinese fireball. Do 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 a red one with an odd fringe of fine mm. gold spikes around its face. Mm. It's so, bearded. It's a bearded dragon. So that one's kind of interesting. Like, I'm expecting oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like all around. Yeah. Almost like a fan. Yeah. So that'd be that one's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Though here's your line: a gigantic black one, more lizard-like than the others. Yeah, because it's describing um, the movements, not just in its look, but lizard-like. I pick up is like its ability to kind of be a little ninja-esque. You well, know, it's skinny. Uses, it's kind of skinnier. Yeah. She used the word gigantic. Yeah. So we're already getting this sort of additive bit that tells us it to say gigantic must mean that it's much bigger than all of the others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it can't be even comparable comparable to any of them. Yeah. Even. Yeah. We can't compare it to any of them because it's gigantic. Yeah. So that we're getting a little bit there. Seven to eight wizards on each dragon. So we're getting an idea of how much it takes to wrangle any of them, let alone the big one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they. They can't control the Hungarian, yeah. which is why it gets stunned. Um, I'm a little surprised it didn't take a second round of stunning. Yeah, yeah. Just to like really emphasize um, the point, but I guess it's not really necessary when you've already said, oh, it can shoot fire twice as long as the others, yeah. and it's got all these spikes everywhere. The tail uh, has, it's got a spiky tail, by the way, that can uh, do just as much damage as its, its mouth. <clears throat> None of the rest mm -hmm. of them have that. Yeah. So it's like already built up enough. Maybe we didn't need to have what I'm suggesting, but it would have been just a little bit of an extra boost of like, oh yeah, and by the way, uh, nine wizards just stunned it and it's still going, so they had to do it again. Yeah. That would have been like next level, like Godzilla scary, I think. Yeah. Um, and then going back to Charlie, the other addition we got to Charlie is yes. this comment about how they are going to be available for, you know, any shenanigans, any, if there if needs protection. Needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so and it just, the, it adds all the more value for why Charlie is there. Yeah. But I'm kind of curious. The letter from Molly. Too. Going forward. The letter from Molly. Oh, was it a letter or did he just talk to her? I can't remember actually. I don't recall a letter. Uh, the, there was something she had said because he, he quoted her. Here we go. Um. Let's see here. I'm, uh, let me just check and see if it was a letter or not. Uh, mm. I don't... Oh, they may have just been talking, actually. Mm. Uh, I didn't dare tell Mum what he's got to do for the first task. She's already having kittens about oh, him. Oh, right, yeah. And then she imitated her voice. Such a mom. How could they let him enter that tournament? He's much too young. I oh. thought they were all safe. I thought there was <laughs> going to be an age limit. He still <laughs> cries about his parents. Oh, bless him. I never knew. <laughs> yeah. I love that she's just, like, feeding into this nonsense that skeeters right but this on. is this better, follows but. the trend from the um second book 
where where she's really big into um oh my gosh magical me why do i always forget his name <laughs> lockhart yes yeah. I, I don't know why lockhart never comes to me but yeah yeah um, well what can i say i'm not <clears throat> as enamored with him as most of these people but this that follows that trend of like i will take him over somebody Rita popular Skeeter and friggin umbridge any day okay <laughs> Gosh, that's tough. You've got like two really arrogant, cocky people yeah. over somebody who is. Well, is that? But like, it's just a different. I, you know, he becomes humbled. You're, you're right. The other though, two do not become way, humbled. Uh, he doesn't become humbled. Oh, to he, a degree. To he a becomes degree. not himself. Well, yeah, his he was his um, his memory is kind of. You know, you're right though. He's I'm often, only right? in it for the money and the fame. Yeah. Um, the They're other in it for the, two want the power. power. Yeah. And specifically, and that always rubs me the wrong way. We don't like that, yeah. <laughs> especially. But they days. are all liars. Yeah. But you, I guess you have to give Lockhart some credit. It seems like his stories are true. It's just they're not his. Right. So the lie is he's just that creative. You know? They're his. That's the lie. Even, even even Rita Skeeter, it's not her doing that creativity. It's her quill doing it for her. She has no sustenance. I've been, I've been trying to figure that out, and I'm wondering if they're going to get to it later. But she does this thing where she like sucks on the thing oh, to yeah, set yeah, it yeah. up. Yeah, it's so and disturbing. I, I wonder if. If, if that's what sort of sets it to be like coming from your voice, her, yeah. So mm -hmm. like the embellishments yeah. are hers, which but then they're means not... like how many people are sucking on the quill? Well, it's just her quill though. <laughs> it's like, she's not sharing it. <laughs> but I, I just wonder if that's like give that's what gives the specific yeah. types of embellishments. Like she's milking the quill. No, it would be the other way around. <laughs> I wonder if it's like it it takes on like her way of writing or, yeah yeah yeah, yeah i wonder if it's something to do with that yeah and, and i don't know if she talked about it later because i can't remember obviously yeah. i don't think it's brought up in the films like when she talks about the quick quotes quill thing it's just that one line and then we just see it floating around writing later there's not a whole lot else to it yeah but this is also where we get the uh, the line about um him and hermione i know yeah all that nonsense nonsense although the it, drama it is what people were thinking as well people, so yeah. it's not surprising um and then he goes back we get serious in the fireplace for the most part that's all fine but we actually get some acknowledgement that Sirius is looking healthier a little more full yes a little more like the wedding photo that harry remembers and it is hard to remember that the last time harry actually saw him was as he was escaping which meant he was still very thin and yeah although he, even at that point he put on a Touch of weight, I thought. Yeah. I think. I don't know. From when he had broken out versus. I feel like he could have. Uh, I feel like he could have done like the Christian Bale, like full on, like drop some weight for that. Did he? I. Uh, I mean, like, nobody goes Christian was, Bale level. Know, let's be fair. Or even Joaquin Phoenix, like. Oh, know. that's true. Anyway, I guess. That I would guess be more there appropriate. Some, I think. There is some comparative stuff there. I yeah. suppose. I don't know if but, Joaquin Phoenix does the heavy too like yeah. mega skinny yeah uh, but yeah it is side tension it is pretty but rough. also the conversation is much longer it is interrupted but it's much longer than in the films and we get the exposition of karkaroff being a death eater yeah yeah um, um <laughs> but a little it, discussion of bertha which doesn't i don't recall that coming up um and him commenting about her being an idiot i don't recall either actually because i don't think her story is as important to the story they told in the film as it is to the overall like explaining sort of these tiny little hints at the background narrative that's going on of how Voldemort came to know all the stuff was going on and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I mean, they even make the comment that Voldemort found out about the tournament, which I thought was really interesting. Probably like, from her, yes. Maybe we should raise the protection situation, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it is but no who's, longer a surprise. Who's piecing this together? I know, and, and that's true. where you get the idea that maybe what they did with the film with Dumbledore actually being angry, not at Harry necessarily, but he's angry in the moment when he's asking Harry the question. Yeah. So it comes out. You know, everybody's <clears throat> had that moment. I think where you're you get, I mean, mad at something else, but you still have to do something, and it comes off like you're angry at somebody else, but you're not. But you're angry. You're just angry. at yourself, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you, um, you still need to say something to somebody, so it comes mm -hmm. out that way, and you're like, oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but he also even says, like, there's, there's a simple way to overcome a dragon, and then that's when he's cut off, which... Right. And I, I don't know how this plays out in the book. I 
uh, mm -hmm. as we go forward here because I can I can remember the the first task which is coming up next obviously yeah um, I can remember it quite a bit from the film it's a it's a pretty like strong scene like. Most of the scene itself is Harry and the dragon. Right. So like yeah. we, you can kind of remember a lot of it in that way. And um, I don't know if it's going to play out the same. Like I is know. Hermione going to be stood outside the tent? I don't know. Yeah. Um, obviously, the Rita Skeeter stuff is probably the same. She's always around. Yeah. Sneaking around. Causing just like trouble. Umbridge. Yeah, yeah. Just like Umbridge. Well, I don't think Umbridge is sneaking around. No, Umbridge just thing. walks in. Yeah. And I don't know how much of like the stuff where Rita decides where to go is her doing her bug form thing and sneaking around that way and then knowing where she wants to go <clears throat> based on that. Mm -hmm. And it's never going to be described to us because we don't find out about the beetle thing until the very end. So yeah. I I'd be curious to see in the show, are we going to see a little beetle like flying around mm -hmm. in certain scenes and you I go, know. wait a second. I, I, I have been thinking, I'm like, uh, maybe we're giving them a little too much credit that they're going to get on all these details. Like, Yeah, but I mean, that's what cool. that's what we expect. It's what they're proclaiming. They so. want to follow the book. I expect them to expand a little bit on the mm -hmm. book for little things. Like mm -hmm. we've mentioned, uh, put a character in the background. Like mm -hmm. in the film, we just watched a scene. Make it proper when we lived were, in, yeah. continuity. Like when I was looking for the thumbnail for this, I saw a scene. Jenny is sat in a on a bench in the background. Mm. Well, that's a perfect time to have Luna in, in the background too. somewhere too. Yeah. But th that that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So in the show, I expect like if there's a scene where Jenny mm. and other people in her year would be there, then Luna needs to have been cast and put in those scenes, right? Like yeah. we need that continuity of named characters who are going to come up later because it doesn't make sense that she just appears. They have to do what J.K. Rowling didn't to a degree. J.K. Rowling. You just didn't fill in the gaps. fully plan out if they are actually could they actually have already the blueprint so you can well and, see the future and know what the present needs to be right like and to some degree there isn't a need for somebody that's not in your year or isn't in any of your classes yeah to have been named yeah but what we do need just is subtly when, when we're in a visual format where yeah. we're seeing these other people in the background have her there you know mm -hmm. and other people for that matter that's all so, yeah, that's what yeah. I expect from the show. And, yeah. and we, we get to pick up more of that, especially in this book, where the differences are kind of stark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, there are major differences between the book and the movie here. Uh, and I think when you start filling in those gaps through the visual medium, like we hope they will do with the show, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's only going to make the character stronger. I mean, one way is like we were just talking about with Hermione. Like in the film, she she's angry about being the middle person between Harry and Ron. And that's like all her character is for most of this film. Mm -hmm. But in the book, she's got her, her she's got other things Elvis occupying. justice thing mm -hmm. going on. Justice she's Warrior. also between those two, but she's already made it clear she's not interested in yeah. in being mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Like she she's trying to hold them together, but she's like, this is still between you guys. You figure it out. But then then she's also got this side where she's also having to fight these ridiculous things coming out because her name is being put in the paper. Yeah. And she's dealing with that too. And this all rounds her out for like what could be her having a nervous breakdown, honestly. Mm -hmm. We've dealt with her having issues in the past with like the time turner and how that was like overloading her. Mm -hmm. And we're already seeing right now things are piling up on her for this year. Yeah. And when is that going to cause her to crack? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Don't you dare. I think that's what we oh, get God. to a degree in the film when she snaps at you Ron and Harry at the um, Yule Ball. Mm -hmm. I think that's her breaking point in the film. I don't know if that's her breaking point in the book. We'll see. You want to say hi? You have something to say? But yeah, first task coming up. Oh, and That's a, uh, and we finish with whiny Ron getting always Ron. getting getting the Potter stinks chucked at his forehead. Really stinks. Really stinks. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Anyway, how's it? Ron. Uh, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I Ronald just, Weasley. I really don't like the way. She, Why are you the way that you she are? wrote her uh, Ron and Harry uh, and, and their relationship in here? I know. I, I understand it's it's a narrative thing that she's done to try to 
break them up for the purposes Build of the story. Conflict. But my goodness, I just wish there had been something before this just sudden rift, mm -hmm. like just a little thing that showed it could happen. Because previous to this, there's just no reason. And that is a wrap on chapter 16 through 19. So next up, my friends, we are reading chapters 20 through 23. So we're going to start the first task. We're going to get some house elf liberation, um, the unexpected task, and the Yule Ball. There's a lot more going on in this one than these last chapters. I'm excited. Yeah. Let's I see. also suspect the unexpected we task might be talking about the egg, but... Yeah, I there think is so also too. a chapter about the egg, so we'll see what happens. I'm curious, very curious. But Yule Ball, Yule Ball, we're finishing excited. Finishing on the Yule Ball should be excited, interesting. Man? Oh, we're so excited. Oh, I love you so much. Okay. All right, so read them daggone chapters. But until next time, my magical friends, remember to love what you love with everything you have, <laughs> and keep making magic. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. I'm just Silence! <laughs> What's that when he says that? I know. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> Hello and... No, just forgot the chapters. What are they? You want more bloopers, you've got more bloopers, okay? All this is the entire intro. Yeah, I don't know how we end up with long videos.